So if you think about it, if I take this guy right here, let's rewrite it and let's prove that it converges to two really quickly. If I take the sum as n goes from one to infinity, <clears throat> I'm gonna write it in both ways, you guys. You're gonna have to get real fluent with being able to do that, of one half to the n minus one, right? What we wanna do is we wanna list a few terms just to get started. Now we've already done this a bunch, so but I'll do it again. So one half plus one fourth, I get a little lazy with these sometimes. You're going to have to yell at me. What is A? Well, A is always the first term of the geometric series. Always, always, always. In this case, it's 1. What is R? Once we've identified <clears throat> that R in this case is 1 half, then I know that this is equal to 1 over 1 minus a half. It's actually known as 1 over a half. 1 over any fraction reciprocates it, and la da. Now the question is, what happens if, if absolute r is greater than or equal to 1? Now you can actually think about that. You can plug that in and figure it out. Remember, this just implies that um, r is greater than or equal to 1 or r is less than or equal to negative 1. That's really what that says, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. If this is the case, then the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of a times r to the n minus 1 diverges. Okay? Guess what? We've got ourselves a home, a home base. We're set. All, if, I, if I run myself into a geometric series, I know that the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see what a is, and I'm going to check to see what r is. Now I'm going to be able to determine immediately not only if it converges, but what it diverges to or but what it converges to. Okay? Now, there's an interesting little theorem that's going to come out of this. Think about that. Why does a geometric series diverge when r is greater than 1? Let's think about that. So remember, that's this guy right here. So if I go back, let's deal with this right here. What's happening if r is greater than 1 when I go from a to a times r. If r is greater than 1, do you agree that my terms are growing? They don't have a choice. They're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm multiplying by values that are bigger and bigger and bigger than 1 every time, which means that every subsequent term grows a little bit more, or a lot more, depending on how big r is. Like if r were 2, then each term would be twice as big as the one before it, right? If I start adding progressively bigger and bigger terms, eventually, remember, infinity is very, very patient. It can take as long as you want to take to get there. No matter how teeny, tiny, tiny, teeny A is, if I keep multiplying that thing times terms that are greater than 1, I'm eventually going to grow it to the point where it gets out of hand big. Wait, 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 but Ripley, what if it's a number really, 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 really close to 0? As long as it's not zero, again, infinity, remember, I'm going to infinity here. If I multiply by a number that's even slightly larger than one, I'm going to grow this value out until I get numbers that are so big that they're out of hand. What happens if I multiply by a number that's less than or equal to negative one? Well, same problem, except now my numbers are going from positive to negative, to positive to negative, to positive to negative. All right, let me give you an example. I want you to try this one out. <clears throat> Let's go one minus... 1 fifth plus 1 25th minus 1. Actually, let's, let's make it more interesting. Than that. I'm sorry, 2. And then let's go 4 25ths minus 8 1 25ths. And then we'll do one more. Uh, plus 16, uh, what is that? 6 25ths. And then minus, and then dot, 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 and then a plus. Now let's see if we can identify what, our, what we're doing here. Well, is it pretty easy to tell that when I go from here to here, I multiplied by negative 2 fifths, right? When I go from here to here, I multiply by negative 2 fifths. And you got to check that. I multiply. These are times, not x's, by the way, negative 2 fifths, etc., right? So what we're doing is we're taking negative 2 fifths, and we're going to raise it. Now, it all depends on how you want to write it. Do you want to start it at 1 and have this be n minus 1, or do you want to start it at 0 and have it be n? doesn't matter to me. I'm going to switch back and forth. So I'm going to write this as n. So this guy right here can be written as the sum as n goes from 0, since I wrote this as n, from 0 to infinity of a, which is the first time, first term, 1 times negative 2 fifths to the n. Easy.
So the first thing that we always want to do is recognize that it's a geometric series. Sweet. Now let's see if it converges or diverges. It's easy. What's A? It's my first term. Well, bam. It's 1. What's R? Now be careful. Respect thy negative, right? Another way that you might see this is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times 2 fifths. Got to be real careful to the n. But, I mean, these can be combined, right? So that's what I did. Well, R is negative 2 fifths. I've got my A, I've got my R. So I know that my sum is equal to, that's another way of writing the sum, the sum is just equal to A over 1 minus R, which in this case is 1 over 1 minus negative 2 fifths, respect I negative, <clears throat> right? And I get 1, 5 fifths plus 2 fifths is 7 fifths, and this thing converges to 5 sevenths. Who knew? That's crazy. That always blew my mind when I first started to learn about mathematics. It's like, what? Huh? I'm adding a whole bunch of things. How many? An infinite number, and yet I can still converge this thing to a point. <clears throat> There's also another very clever way to prove that 0 0.999, 0 0.999 repeating. You see, you can put a repeat bar if you wanted to, equals 1. Watch how easy this is. Do you agree that 0.9 repeating is 9 tenths plus 9 one hundredths plus 9 one thousandths plus et cetera, et cetera. Now let's see what we got. What do we have here? To get from here to here, I'm multiplying by one tenth. To get from here to here, I'm multiplying by one tenth, right? All right, now, so what we're going to do is we're going to go plus 9 tenths to the n, right? You agree with that? Does that make sense? But now we got to figure out where to start this thing. Now, when I'm writing this thing up as a, r to the, either the n or the n minus 1, this is what I was talking about earlier when I said you can start switching these things around to, to suit your needs, basically. My first term is 9 tenths, so we're going to build this thing out. We're going to do a sum, and then we're going to figure out where to start it and finish it, right? My first term is 9 tenths, right? And then I'm multiplying to get from the first term to the next term, I'm multiplying by one-tenth. Now, I wrote it as, whoa, sorry, I wrote it as nine-tenths to the n, which is completely incorrect. I should have written it as, all right, guys, nine times one-tenth to the n, right? Right? All right. Now, how do I deal with this? What am I going to do? Problem is, is if I start this thing at I can do either n or n minus 1, all right? All right, there's all kinds of stuff that we could do, but let's leave it like this. Where do I need to start this? Do I need to start it at 1, or do I need to start it at 0? Well, since my first term is 9 tenths, I need this term to go away and become a 1. So I'm going to start it at 0 and go to infinity, right? That's pretty easy, isn't it? Nothing to it. Now, look at that. It's in perfect form. Remember, we're proving right now, we got sort of muddled down in some of the mathematics there, but we're proving that 0.9 repeating is 1. Well, watch. It's clearly geometric, because to get from one term to the next, I simply multiply by a tenth. I know that A is 9 tenths. I know that R is 1 tenth, which implies that the sum is equal to 9 tenths divided by 1 minus 1 tenth, a.k.a. 9 tenths, 9 tenths, whatever the heck that is. Ta -da. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Nothing to it. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to give you a theorem. It's time for a theorem. And let's see if you can agree. Now, I'm going to write two theorems up, one that was for sequences and one that's for series. Hopefully, you're understanding the huge, the vast difference between sequences and series. Sequence is just a box, and it's a box where stuff that goes in is ordered. A series is where we got to add all the stuff up in the box. Okay? All right. You ready? If... The, if uh, the series, uh, let's just go n equals 1 to infinity of a sub n, converges. If it's going to converge, then the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n must equal what? What has to happen? What must this term head towards as n goes to infinity? The answer to that's easy. It's zero. Now, why is that? 
because way out here at the end, when, remember, I'm adding an infinite number of things. So the things way out towards infinity had better be super small, so small that as to be inconsequential, arbitrarily close to zero, so, clo so small you can't tell the difference, or so close to zero that you can't tell the difference. Else, the series, you know, under infinity of a sub n, diverges. In other words, if it equals anything other than zero, then your series diverges. Now, if you think about that, why would that be? Well, let's play with that just a second. Okay, so I got sum of a sub n, and let's say that the limit as, a, as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals 1. Well, what we're going to have is we're going to have a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus, and then a whole bunch of numbers, right? And then way out at infinity, Right? Infinity's patient. Doesn't take there. It takes a while to get there, but once we get there, this guy, I should probably write this up. Suppose that the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals 1. This guy's going to start acting like 1s. And you add up an infinite number of 1s, and guess what? You're heading for infinity. That's why here, this guy right here, what I want it to start acting like is numbers so close to zero that they don't count anymore. And all we end up grabbing is the numbers that aren't so close to zero that they don't count. And that's hard to wrap your brain around, man. That takes a while. Now, the question is, is, is the converse true? Is the converse of the theorem true? Well, what would the converse be? Well, i.e., if the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals 0, does this imply that the sum of a sub n, let's just go n equals 1 to infinity. I'll just start writing this, by the way, as the sum of a sub n without the n's on it from time to time. Does this imply that it converges? All right? Does this work? Is it true or is it false? The answer is false. I'm going to show you why with a really, really simple series. It also happens to be a home base. It's a cornerstone. It's the one that we get for free. It's called the harmonic series. The harmonic series. The harmonic series is the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n, which we can look at as 1 plus a half plus a third plus a fourth plus a fifth plus dot 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 plus 1 over n. I'm going to prove that this thing diverges. Now, I want to show you why that shows that this thing is false. Well, look at the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n. It's 0. If this thing were true, then this series would have to converge, but it doesn't. And I'm going to prove that to you. 